Thanks for selecting one of our TaxLayer Pro training videos. In this video, we're going to prepare a simple early season tax return. We're going to prepare this early season tax return for a head of household client who has a dependent with daycare, who qualifies for earned income credit, and we're going to mark the return for electronic filing. Now there's a couple of ways to begin a tax return in TaxLayer Pro. I can click on the Tax Returns button here. I could click on number one, Tax Returns, or from my keyboard I could just simply enter the number one here in the Enter Option uh, area. But what I'm going to do is click on Tax Returns. I'll get the message asking me to print out the 7216 disclosure. This is the consent to use disclosure. I'm not going to print that out at the moment. And now the program is going to ask me to enter the taxpayer's social security number to start or select a return. I'm going to do a new return, so I'm going to enter in my social security number. The program is going to ask me, do I want to create a new return? I'll say yes. Next, the filing status screen appears. The first part of the program is, a, is an interview process and we're going to be working our way down the 1040. If you had a, imagine you had a 1040 laying on your desk, imagine what it would look like working our way down from the heading section all the way down through the 1040. So what I'm going to do for my tax return uh, on this client, I'm going to select head of household. I'm going to enter my taxpayer's first name, middle initial, last name, address and so forth. I'm going to enter in two phone numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in my client's email address at this point. I want to capture that contact information. And now I have a little pause to refresh screen. I can check make sure that all of my clients information has been entered correctly looks like everything is good here especially that social security number you want to make sure that social security number has been entered correctly I'm gonna go ahead and exit this screen the program now asks me do I want to enter a dependent and I do this is a head of household return so I'm gonna enter my dependent information now you're gonna see this box this little window sprinkled throughout the program It looks a lot like this selection buttons down below so I'm gonna hit the new button I'm gonna enter in this dependents name and notice right here I can hit the enter key if the dependents last name is the same as the taxpayer so I'm gonna simply hit the enter key fill that in put the dependents date of birth and the dependents social security number The relationship, Jeremy's his son, and Jeremy's lived with the taxpayer for 12 months. So I'm going to hit OK here. Now the program has recognized that I might have dependent care expenses for this dependent because of his age, and indeed we do. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in $3,100 for dependent care. And now another review screen here where I can check over Jeremy's information, make sure that I've entered everything in correctly. Uh, the birth date especially and the social security number. At this point if I needed to enter another dependent I would simply click the new button or in this case just for our little practice tax return here I'm going to exit. Now the program has seen that I've entered an amount for dependent care expenses so I'm gonna go ahead right now and enter that child care provider information so that I don't forget it. So I'm going to click on yes. Again, here's that familiar little box that we're going to see throughout the program. I'm going to hit the new button. When I hit that new button, the child care provider information screen pops up asking me for the provider's ID number, the name, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that information here in the program. 
I enter the provider's EIN, the name of the provider, Sunshine House, the address, and the zip code. And notice when I enter in the zip code, just as throughout the, uh, most of the program, when I enter the zip code, the city and the state automatically fill. And now I need to re-enter that amount that I entered previously for the child care. I'm going to re-enter that $3,100 here and hit OK. Again, I can check my information for the Sunshine House, for the daycare provider, make sure that everything is OK, and I'm going to exit this menu. Now at this point I have the opportunity to enter another daycare provider if I needed to, but for our little practice return I'm just going to go ahead and exit out. Now once I've exited that daycare provider information screen, the program now asks me for my preparer code. Now the preparer code does two things. If you have seasonal preparers that you pay by commission, you have probably already set up a preparer code in your uh, configuration in your initial program setup. This will identify who or which preparer does the return. Also putting in a preparer code pulls your company information to the bottom of your 1040 form. So what I'm going to do is enter my preparer code here. And for the first time every day as you come in when you enter your preparer code, the program will tell you have an excellent day. I'm going to hit OK here. Now we get into the health care questions, the Affordable Care Act questions from my client. The first one asks me, did my client have minimum essential health care coverage for himself, his spouse, anyone he, he could or did claim as a dependent? I'm going to go ahead and answer yes to this question. And the follow-up question, did my client enroll in health insurance through the marketplace, through healthcare.gov or one of the state exchanges? I'm going to go ahead and answer this question, no. I'm now at the personal information menu. Here, another review screen. I can change anything in here if I need to change or correct a name and address, the filing status, uh, any other categories of personal information that I may need to take care of. I'm going to go ahead and exit here. Now again, we're working our way down the 1040. I'm on line 7 now. The program asks me if I want to enter W-2s now. I'm going to say yes to this. And I'm reminded that the uh, program requires whole dollar entries. I'm going to, the program will round off these amounts for me. But here's that box again, again with the, new, uh, with the familiar little buttons down here. I'm going to hit the new button so I can enter in my client's W-2. I'm going to enter in the, his employer ID number. And again, anything that I have entered in previously with employer's information, the program is going to remember. So it automatically fills in the employer name and address for me. I'm going to put in the wages, his federal tax withheld. And notice that the W-2 screen automatically fills in Social Security wages, tax withheld, Medicare wages, and Medicare tax withheld. Takes me down to box 12. If I had any entries in box 12 of the W-2, I would take care of those here, but I don't. So I'm simply going to come on down here to the state entry screen. My client is a resident of Georgia, so I'm going to select Georgia. The state ID for this employer automatically fills in from a W-2 that I've entered previously. The wages automatically fill in. So all I have to do here is enter the tax withheld for the state of Georgia. I can quickly review this W-2. Go ahead and hit the enter key and uh, exit the W-2 screen. Again, if I had a, another W-2 to enter, I would simply hit the new button. But for our practice return, I'm going to exit and keep moving through the return. At this point, the program brings up the income menu. Now, we do this for a reason. At this point in the return, you would want to ask your client, do you have any other income from any other source? This income menu lists all of the various income possibilities on a 1040. You don't want to get to the end of the 1040, tell your client what the refund is going to be until you've done your due diligence and asked him, asked him if he had any other income from any other source here. We don't, so I'm going to go ahead and exit the income menu. 
Now the program has recognized that my client qualifies for EIC because of uh, his filing status because of the fact he has a child and because of his uh, income the, the amount of income that we put on the return so now I need to get into the 8867 the EIC checklist menu or the due diligence questions anytime I see must answer on this menu I have to go in and satisfy the requirements for this menu option so I'm gonna click on number one here must answer the first question, was a taxpayer non-resident alien for any part of the year? I'm going to answer no. Is the taxpayer qualifying child of another person? No. Did you complete 8867 based on current information provided by the taxpayer? Yes. Here's an important point. Did you ask this taxpayer any additional questions that are necessary to meet your knowledge requirement? Notice up here. I can press F8 at any time in this interview process and enter in due diligence notes. Anything that might help uh, satisfy the due diligence requirements for my client and satisfy that eligibility requirement for EIC. So I'm going to answer yes. Did you document the additional questions you asked and your client's answers? And again, take note of that little F8 key if I want to enter in more due diligence notes here during the interview process. Did the taxpayer spouse provide you with the information necessary? Yes, he did. So now I've satisfied menu option number one. We have a qualifying child, Jeremy, so I'm going to click on menu option number two here for the due diligence questions the 8867 EIC checklist does Jeremy qualify another person for EIC no we got away pretty easy with that one just one question and now I need to satisfy the residency of qualifying child or children documents notice I have a must answer there I'm gonna click on that we're gonna say in this case that we use Jeremy's school records I'm gonna place a check in that box for school records hit OK I'm reminded the IRS requires me to keep a copy of any documents that, relied, that I relied on for purposes of determining EIC eligibility. I'm going to click OK on that. My notes are attached. I've satisfied the 8867, the EIC checklist menu question, so I'm going to exit this menu. All right, once I've exited that EIC due diligence menu. I'm now at what we call the EIC information edit screen. Again, just a review screen. If for some reason I needed to go back into the 8867, the EIC checklist, I could do that here. But for this return, I'm going to go ahead and exit this menu. All right, exiting the EIC menu takes us to what we call the client's 1040 screen. Now here, our client's potential refund is displayed at the top of the screen and if we had any other entries for this client that we needed to make we could select the appropriate forms notice I can just scroll down the 1040 here if uh, we needed to put other income in here alimony something of that nature just simply click on the line of the 1040 form where you need to make the entry or you can use the menu options here personal in, uh, information income adjustments menu and so forth but for this client, what we're going to do is finish it up by marking the return for electronic filing. We'll, we're going to assume that the refund is correct. We've made all the correct calculations and everything. So I'm going to uh, mark this return for electronic filing. The only way to do this in the program is this menu option right here, number 12, Mark Return Electronic. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to see a question, does the taxpayer want the preparation fees taken out of their refund? So in other words, does the taxpayer want a bank product? For my taxpayer, I'm going to say no here. And I'm given some options here as to how my client wants to e-file this return. I'm going to make things simple for this practice return. I'm going to choose electronic mail check and hit OK. The taxpayer's PIN and my PIN automatically pull into what we call the practitioner PIN menu. The taxpayer's PIN is simply the last four digits of their social with a 1 in front of it. My PIN I entered in the configuration into the initial setup of the program. So I'm going to exit here. The program is going to prompt me to print the 8879, the IRS e-file signature authorization. I'm not going to do that at this point. 
And now I have another review screen. If I wanted to change the return type, let's say for instance I wanted to change from an electronic mail check to something else, all I need to do is click on number one and it gives me these options once again. I'm going to exit the e-file menu. I'm now back at the 1040 screen. Now notice what I did. I completed the federal return. We calculated a federal refund. I then marked the federal return electronic before I even uh, started to prepare a state return. The way that our software works, you need to mark the federal return for electronic filing before going into the state return. So now I'm going to prepare the state return. The only place to do that is right here, option number 10, state return. I'm going to see a little message here telling me that uh, any addbacks or subtractions, things like bonus depreciation, things of that nature that some states don't conform to, I'm going to need to check that. So I'm going to hit OK. This is my state menu and I told you that my client is a resident of Georgia so I'm going to select Georgia right here and by the way in the event that I needed to delete a state return at some time that delete state return option is number one right here but for now I'm going to complete my clients Georgia return select Georgia click OK and just about every state program that we uh, offer will have this type of menu resident part year resident or non-resident menu my client he's a Georgia resident so I'm going to click there and with basically with one mouse click I've completed the Georgia return Georgia is a fairly easy state we comply with most all of the federal laws uh, there are some states that are a little more difficult you might have to check some credits or deductions things of that nature anyway I've calculated the Georgia refund so now I'm going to mark this state return for electronic filing with this option here the electronic information menu I click on that yes I want to file this Georgia state return electronically I'm going to do an electronic mail check and again if I wanted to change that all I need to do is click on this option I'm going to exit asking me if I want to print the clients 8453 I'm not going to do that at this time back at the Georgia main menu exit exit again and I'm back at the 1040 screen I'm finished with this tax return I can now click the exit button I'm at my receipt menu showing me my preparation fees electronic filing fees and so forth I can exit the return and now when I exit the receipt menu a question is going to appear on the screen asking me if I'm ready to mark the return as completed and ready for transmission. Now this simply means that the return is going to be placed in the electronic transmission table. If I need to add information or make any corrections to the return, I can still do this before I transmit it. So what I'm going to do is select yes, and then after I've selected yes, I'm told the program that I'm ready to add that return to the e-file table. A backup copy of the return will be created and I'm taken back to the main menu where I can begin a new tax return. To transmit this return, we encourage you to watch the tutorial video titled e-filing a tax return. Thank you.